and for your kind words uh, as usual. And as I said, the, the, the pleasure is, is mine. And re I really love to, to be part of uh, any community activity uh, which is driven by people like you with, uh, you know, a lot of efforts and, and, you know, passion on what we are doing. So thanks again. Um, so here we are. Today, we're going to be talking about a really excited topic. is SQL Server 2022, right? Um, as you may know, it was released recently, November last year, during uh, the Past Data Community Summit. So um, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, a great event, and we were, we were there for the uh, presentation, right? Um, so let's move on. A little bit about uh, myself. Right. My name is Javier Villegas. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, I work at the Mediterranean Shipping Company as IT director in the DBA and BI services area. I am Microsoft MVP since uh, 2016 and Microsoft certified trainer as well. Uh, I'm also a member of the Azure Data Community Advisory Council and I consider myself a technical speaker, uh, trying to engage with communities, with uh, SQL Pass, with uh, you know as many communities as I can. Group by uh, Data Platform Geeks, and you know uh, everybody who would like to have me and have uh, you know uh, some time to discuss about technology. Right? I'm also one of the co-leader of our local. Uh, community down here in Buenos Aires, which is SQL Argentina. Right? We have our uh, events now trying to slowly resume to uh, in person, but we still have, um, you know, virtual events like this. And, you know, you are free to join us. They are in Spanish, our uh, native language, but, you know, you, you are always wel welcome to, to join us. In the left uh, part of the screen, you will see my contact information, email address, Twitter, LinkedIn, and my personal blog, right? If you have any question related to this presentation or anything that you would like to discuss, uh, reach me this way, and I'm happy to, to engage with uh, you. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, it was uh, released recently. It was a great event. It was, you know, we were really waiting for the RTM version of uh, SQL Server 2022. Um, and, you know, we started this journey actually a long time ago in where we engaged with Microsoft for the uh, private previews and then the uh, public preview until finally, uh, you know, we got the, the the RTM version. For the ones that are already using SQL Server 2022, uh, last week um, Microsoft released the first cumulative update, right? Cumulative update number one, in where they address a ton of bug fixes and, and some new small tweaks for features. Uh, so highly recommend you to, to go there and have a look, All right? So what is interesting in terms of SQL Server 2022 is that this is not just a new SQL Server version, right? This is a continuation of what Microsoft called the modern version of SQL Server, which has started back with 2016, with SQL Server 2016, right? These are what Microsoft called modern SQL Server version. And, you know, in, in, in this major version, Microsoft is including features, but, you know, they keep evolving those features version after version. So, for example, in the um, uh, performance area, Microsoft has released Query Store back in SQL Server 2016, and then it has been evolving till 
today with 2022. We're going to have uh, some minutes talking about Query Store later in the presentation and see uh, how it was used back then when it was released and how it is used today in SQL Server 2022 as well as the other uh, offerings that SQL has in Azure, which are Managed Instance and Azure SQL Database. So this is really interesting. The, the performance area is the one that I like the most, in the one in where I focus the most, but uh, there are a ton of improvements in all the main pillars, right? Performance, of course, availability and security, right? So we will see these features in, in a moment. Right. It's, it's interesting because Microsoft called this version 2022 as Azure enable, right? Uh, so it's extremely well connected with Azure. And the reason of that is that they have, you know, a couple of important key components that are really having an extremely good connectivity with some product and services in Azure, right? Actually, you know, to rephrase this a little bit, Microsoft is not talking directly of new features. They are talking about challenges, right? Presented by the community, by customers, and by everybody who's actually using SQL, presenting some challenges, and then uh, they releasing a set of functionality which are addressing those challenges, right? In this first part of the slide, there are three, you know, areas which are high availability with link feature with uh, managed instance, data warehousing with Azure Synapse link, right? And the integration with PureView for everything that is related to security, right? This is why Microsoft is focusing in Azure Connected, right? We will go through all these uh, areas in, in a moment, but you know this is why Microsoft is heavily focusing on these main pillars. Also, regarding to security, there is a new feature which was already released in, in Azure SQL a while back, but now is available in um, SQL Server 2022 with the advantage and the possibility of using blockchain technology, cryptography technology within SQL Server. Uh, we will cover this also later on. And of course, the evolution in what they call the uh, building query intelligence, right? Uh, Microsoft is extremely focusing on performance in trying to get you the best product and with an additional caveat, which is always is without having to do any code change, right? We will gonna see some cool demos later on. And of course, all this offering is going from the edge, going to the on-premise environment as well as to the cloud, right? So we know that it's not only SQL Server, not only SQL Server 2022, it's a product of, of product and services, it's, it's a family of product and services, which is called Azure SQL, all right? So if we go through and cover, right, all the main new capabilities within SQL Server 2022, as we briefly mentioned before, it is cloud connected, right? With the integration of high availability with managed instance, um, almost online data warehousing or ETLs with Synapse Analytics and the uh, integration with PureView for security. Also, all the benefits that we will cover in deep in terms of performance. In terms of security, scalability, and availability, there are a ton of new features that Microsoft is not highlighting too much because, you know, they are not the start here, but Believe me, they are doing the difference in many, many, many areas. We will try to cover some of them, right? A new concept within uh, SQL Server 2022, again, already available in Azure Synapse Analytics and in Managed Instance, is this idea of data virtualization, right? So from SQL Server, we are now able to access 
data that is not physically stored within our SQL Server, right? It is stored, for example, in a storage account, in a data lake, in a container with CSV file, parquet file, etc. And we see this data in SQL like a normal table, right? Quite, quite interesting. As uh, and also, as on every single new SQL Server version, there are a ton of enhancement in the T-SQL language, right? Which are now helping us to do more with less, right? The, the, this is a phrase that I like because actually there are certain examples that, you know, now today we are able to do pretty much a lot, but maybe to accomplish certain things, we have to get quite creative, right? And write uh, several uh, lines of code to come up with something, right? Well, when Microsoft and the community identifies all this and pass the feedback to Microsoft, right? They get this and they come up maybe with a, um, a, a function or something that with one line of code, with one call, we can do what we used to do before. So really, really cool new things in terms of enhancement in, in T-SQL. And also there are some enhancement in JSON, right? Where we're gonna see also some of those things, right? Which is interesting, is like a while back, right? We can run this in Linux since 2017. We can run this in containers. We can run this on-premise in our own servers, in our own data center in Azure Virtual Machine as a service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So is this continue the same, right? Um, of course, as every single uh, new major SQL Server version, there is a new compatibility level, 160, in where we're gonna be discussing uh, some of the things that we may uh, use or, or for which, point, we need to use this new compatibility uh, level. There are some changes also within the uh, setup process, right? You will find that there are certain things that used to be there that now are gone, and there are new things to discuss, right? Um, I will go briefly here. But one of the things that is most important and, 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 and definitely something uh, to pay uh, a lot of attention is this new benefit of uh, licensing, which is called pay as you go, right? So now instead of buying the licenses for core or per client, how we used to, right? There is a new option that will allow us to do pay as you go. Right, which at the end of the day can be uh, useful for certain scenarios. Mm -hmm. As usual, we have the, the three main editions, Express, Standard, and Enterprise. And then within Enterprise, we have, uh, you know, Enterprise uh, by core or Enterprise uh, up to, you know, certain number of, of uh, Course, right? This is always the same. No, no many changes uh, here, uh, but definitely something to uh, consider, right? All right. Cloud connected, and then we enter into this this topic a little bit, uh, uh, you know, with with more examples, right? So. Beside the integration with managed instance in Apps Analytic and PureView that we're going to go uh, through now, we have a couple of other things that are worth to mention. One of them is that now we have integration with Azure Active Directory, right? Not only with the normal, you know, AD uh, that we used to have before, now we can integrate SQL Server 2022 and have, um, and have authentication via uh, Azure Active Directory. There are also uh, another component which is quite uh, useful in, in the cloud, which is Defender for SQL. But now this one gives us the possibility of having Defender in our uh, own SQL Server 2022, which in few words, what Defender does is trying to identify uh, like, uh, you know, any kind of activity that may not be safe 
right? And try to, you know, identify if we are under attack or if there are code that is trying to do SQL injection or something and give us the possibility of, of take certain actions, right? This is, as I said, available in Azure SQL uh, database, in managed instance, and now also uh, available in SQL Server 2022. So when we go to this first challenge, right? And now we enter into the description of these new uh, features and set of features to address these challenges. We can, um, you know, say that setting up a disaster recovery site is quite hard, right? I mean, it's not impossible, but it's quite hard, right? So if now today we have our SQL Server on premise in, in our main data center and we need to set up a disaster recovery, meaning that we need another location with another server, with a network connection, et cetera, to do uh, availability groups and replication. I mean, it's doable, it's possible. It is what we do, right? But it's complex and it's complex to maintain. Well, now with SQL Server 2022, we have the possibility of very easily, right, configure via wizard, um, a distribute availability group, right? Using Azure Managed Instance as a replica, right? That means that we will have our SQL Server 2022 VM or on-premise. We will be connected through, uh, you know, Azure to a managed instance, and we will have a distributed availability group synchronizing asynchronously, right? So if there is a problem, we have the data in managed instance. Furthermore, we have the possibility of doing a failover, right? So we can switch the role. So instead of having the SQL Server 2022 as a primary, we can switch the role and make the managed instance the primary. And of course, we uh, can um, fail back, right? So we can switch the roles quite easily. Additionally, and this is also something new, uh, up to SQL Server 2019, we were able to take a backup on SQL Server 19 and restore it to a managed instance. But we were not able to take a backup of a managed instance database and restore it in SQL Server 2019. Well, now with SQL Server 2022, you can take any backup on managed instance or SQL Server 2022 and restore it with absolutely no problem. This is another thing that was highly required by, by the community. Mm -hmm. Also, something uh, interesting is that something that we will see a little bit more in, in, in deep in, in a second is the possibility of having what is called contain availability group. What is contain availability group? Well, basically, uh, as for today, we are able to synchronize or replicate using availability groups only our user databases, right? But what about our logins, our SQL shop, our system object, right? We can't. So we have to go through a bunch of uh, community scripts or solutions, which are quite good, but are not native. Right? Well, now with container availability group, we will be able to not only synchronize our user databases, but also include master and MSDB. Quite, uh, quite interesting. Right. So what is this uh, link uh, feature for managed instance? Well, basically what uh, we will be doing is what we always do, right? Set up connectivity between uh, SQL Server on-prem, right? Having it as a primary, and then the replica with the managed instance, right? So we just need to have the connectivity, of course, the Azure subscription, and being able to uh, connect. Same as we have in SQL Server Availability Group, the, re the, the replica, in this case, managed instance, could be also be used as a read-only replica, right? So, um, you know, we can use this to offload our primary workload, I mean, to have read-only uh, workload in 
our uh, replica instead of in our primary. Right? Really, really cool. So, as I said, also, uh, you know, we can take backups from managed instance, right, and restore it back to SQL Server 2022. Super cool, something quite useful because before the journey was from on-prem to the cloud, but then we didn't have the possibility to restore it back to our on-prem SQL servers. Now we do, right? Okay, the second challenge. Uh, we know that setting up an ETL process, extraction, transformation, and load in a data warehouse is also quite uh, complex. And, you know, easily it gets uh, out of date. That means that today we prepare a, an ETL, we extract data from our operational SQL server, and we ingest it into our data warehouse for example, Azure Synapse Analytics, right? But we run this ETL every, you know, hour, six hour, once a day, depending of, on our needs, right? So if we move the data in the morning, by noon, that data is old, right? We're gonna be doing analytics with data that has certain time, right? Well, now with SQL Server 2022, you have now this feature which is called Azure Synapse Link for SQL, which allows you to replicate right, some of your operational tables from SQL Server 2022 straight to a dedicated SQL pool in Synapse Analytics in real time. Right? This means that you have your operational data which is constantly being updated, inserted, delete, whatever, you will have those changes in almost real time in Synapse Analytics, so you can put Power BI at the top of it, for example, and you will be doing analytics reporting in real time, right? Super, super cool. Okay, let's see these two features combined in action. What I will show you here, this is a pre-recorded uh, version because you know it was taken with uh, a pre-release version of, of 2022, right? because right now there are still some caveats to, to adjust, so I decided to do it this way. What you will see here is a SQL Server 2022, right? which in where we're going to create a distributed availability group using the wizard, so we're going to have a managed instance and uh, you know one specific database synchronizing with this uh, you know with with managed systems and SQL Server 2022, and at the same time certain tables within that uh, SQL Server 2022 database replicating in almost real time to Azure Synapse Analytics. Okay, let me play the video. Uh, not sure if you will hear so let, let me do the okay i i will be showing you in manage instant in management studio you have now this uh, new wizard azure sql manage instance link right and you have two options replicate database or failover right so what we will be doing here is setting up uh, um, uh, a database as managed instance. So we do replicate and this wizard come up. It is requiring you to set up a couple of things like, for example, two specific trace flags, which are mainly targeted to uh, make the synchronization faster, right? 1800 and 9567. Uh, Some of them, we already have them, but you know they are required now for uh, for this uh, feature, right? So what this wizard is doing is just checking if you have them there. Of course, they are not mandatory because you know otherwise you won't be able to move on. But you know it's highly recommendable to set up those uh, two trade flags. So what I'm doing here is just setting up these two trade flags as a global 
uh, trade flag, right? So from Management Studio or you know the way you prefer to to do it, you set up these two trade flags globally. Once the trade flags are set, we go here, we rerun the wizard, and now it's all green, right? Okay, same as an availability group, you have the possibility of choosing which user databases you will be uh, synchronizing or putting in, in the distributed availability group. Then the next step will be signing in into your Azure account so you can get all your uh, managed instances under your subscription, right? And then, you know, the final step is that automatically it will create the distributed availability group, right? Once it is created, we go back to Management Studio, we go to Availability Groups in, in SQL Server 2022, and we see two availability groups. One with is a normal availability group and then a distribute availability group, right? The one that is, this is made directly by the wizard. You have to do nothing, right? So uh, one we have here is we have a table, right? In this case, we see that we have this sample table CSV, uh, and you know the this is sorted by ID. The minimum uh, ID is five thousand, right? What I will be doing here in this demo is I will be deleting some of them. As you can see, now I'm connected to the managed instance. Right, and I have exactly the same table. Right, in this case, as you may know, this is a read-only replica. So, if eventually I would like to delete something on the read-only replica, I'm gonna get this nasty error message saying that I cannot delete because the database is read-only. Right. So, if I go back to uh, my um, SQL Server, well, actually here, what I'm doing is also showing you uh, a connectivity through um, Synapse. So as you can see in my Object Explorer, I have SQL Server, I have Managed Instant, and I'm also connected to a dedicated uh, Azure Synapse Analytic uh, SQL Pool, right? So I have the three of them here. And same as before, right? If I do a select, this table, sample table, CSV, it's also there, the same amount of rows, and the, the minimum ID is uh, 6,000. So I go back to SQL Server 2019, uh, 2022, sorry, and I will delete uh, 1,000 rows, right? So I go here to the primary. Of course, I can do it through the primary. So I delete 1,000 rows. So now my minimum ID is 6,000, right? nothing weird, nothing fancy. I go to my managed instance, right, right? And without doing anything, I just do select to the same table and I see the same information. And this is because it is connected through a, a, a distribute availability group, right? If I go to my Synapse Analytics, right? And I do the same select, I see exactly the same information. Right. In Synapse with Azure Synapse link, right? Uh, you can you have to set up table by table. Right? It's not the whole database that you just synchronize like an availability group. And actually, what you have over there is always, you know, read write. So eventually you can modify the data in uh, Synapse Analytics, right? So Pretty interesting in, in this, uh, you know, few uh, small video, I try to cover as much as possible the two features in one demo. So I'm combining them, right? Okay, security, as mentioned, integration with Azure Active uh, Directory, PureView, and Microsoft uh, Defender. And then, in the area of performance, we will cover this uh, uh, a little bit more in detail. The challenge here is, as usual, do uh, performance tuning, right? This is what I love, this is what I do, but we know that it's complex and it's quite 
expensive and time consuming, right? So what SQL Server 2022 is giving us in order to help us with this? Well, first of all, starting a few versions ago, in 2016, actually, Microsoft uh, released Query Store. Right? We know that Query Store is basically this performance repository, right, that we enable at uh, user database and is collecting all the runtime information as well as all the plan changes through the time. And also in 2017, uh, Microsoft added the possibility of uh, tracking the um, the weights as well, right? As we know also in SQL Server 2016, 17 and 19, right? SQL Server had Query Store disabled by default. That means that if we have to create a brand new database or restore a database and we wanted to have Query Store enabled, right? we have to do it manually. Uh, some time ago, Microsoft made the change in Manage Instance and Azure SQL Database that by default, when you create a new database, Query Store was enabled by default, right? Now in SQL Server 2022, right, when you create a brand new database, Query Store is enabled by default, right? That means that now is the same behavior than uh, Azure SQL DB and Manage Instance. And we will go through why Query Store is enabled by default in, in a minute, right? We also have this technology called Intelligent Query Processing, IQP. Microsoft call it, in this case, next generation, because on every single version of uh, IQP, they keep adding more and more, uh, you know, situations in where uh, it is possible to address these performance uh, things. Let's understand a little bit more on why we may need Query Store enabled. Right? First of all, there are three new main features. Two of them are uh, targeting, um, you know, the Query Store, and another one is not. So let's go uh, in a minute and and discuss which these features are. One of them is degree of parallelism feedback. The other one is cardinality estimation feedback. Both of these features rely on query store. And what are they doing? Right? Why they are so cool, let's say. All right, so let's say, let's, let's focus a little bit on DOP feedback. We know that setting up the max degree of parallelism is always uh, challenging, right? Depending on who you read, which blog, uh, who community expert, and even Microsoft, they may give you different recommendations depending on, you know, a thousand uh, factors, right? Number of CPU, numbers of cores, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we know that it's hard, right? What we also know is that today we can set up the DOP as instance level, right? As database level with uh, database scope configuration and also at statement level. We can use a hint, right? I, in one specific statement and say, hey, for this specific statement, it's better for you to use uh, a different DOP, right? What happened with that? We have to open the code, add the hint, and recompile the store procedure. For the CE feedback, it's kind of similar. We know that there are many hints that are capable of changing the behavior of a specific statement within a store procedure, right? to do certain things in a different way, which at the end of the day are faster, for example, right? Again, we have to identify the statement, right? 
put the uh, the hint, recompile the procedure, and then check the following execution to see if the behavior is the one that we expected. Same for the DOP. If we change the DOP of a specific statement, we have to identify it. We have to manually put the, the, the hint and then follow up and do you know the, the, the verification. What if I tell you that now with these two features, when you have query store enabled and these two features enabled, what SQL Server will be doing automatically, right, is checking for every single statement that is running in your user database. And if it detects that, for example, that specific statement will run better on a different DOP level, it will automatically change the DOP for that execution, for that statement, without you having to do anything. Same for the CE feedback. It will automatically detect which are the statements that will run better with a different CE uh, hint, and it will put it automatically and will do the verification for us. This is extremely useful, and you will see it in action in a minute, right? Additionally, there is another feature of Intelligent Query Processing Next Generation, which is known as Parameter Sensitive Plan Optimization, PSP Optimization. This is quite cool also. This one is not relying on the query store, right? But it's quite interesting. Let's say that, you know, I know that all of you are familiar with the parameter sniffing uh, situation, right? We know that when you have a store procedure which is recently compiled and you execute it for the very first time with a specific parameter, what SQL Server will be doing is storing in cache the execution plan, but for that specific uh, parameter, right? We will see what is Microsoft is doing in a minute, right? To address this situation, right? So, what do we need to do to use all these features? Well, first of all, have SQL Server 2022 um, and have compatibility level 116. Make sure that Query Store is enabled, right? And that's it. As usual, this is not, I mean, I'm recommending you to test this in a lower environment first, but. Uh, you know, my personal experience is, is definitely uh, what, what is mentioned here, the, the key principles, right? Do not harm is the most important one. And the option to disable, you always have the possibility of disabling all of this one by one. So parameter sensitive plan, which has said that, you know, up to SQL Server 2019 or, you know, with compatibility level, uh, 150, you execute the store procedure for the very first time with one parameter. And let's say that it requires a seek, an index seek. Okay, it will do it and no problem. Then you have the same store procedure with a different parameter. And let's say that in this opportunity, right, what is better is to do a table scan, right? And this is the plan that gets stored into the cache, right? When you run the store procedure again with the parameter one, it will be using the uh, plan with the scan, so the execution will not be good. Now, with PSP optimization, we run the store procedure for the very first time with the parameter number one, which will require an index seek, right? Uh, then we run the store procedure again with another parameter, number 10, which requires scan. What SQL Server will be doing now in 2022, it, it will be storing both execution plan for the same query. So depending on which parameter you use, it will use one plan or the other. Now your question could be, hey, it is going to store one plan for every single parameter. The answer is not. It's going to uh, store two plans, and it will try to use 
the best approach for each of them. All right. So really, really cool, super useful, and you know, a, a bunch of new questions about this, but definitely uh, you have to give it a try. It's, it's really, really super cool, right? As I said before, setting up the DOP is quite complex and challenging. So uh, definitely what Microsoft is trying to do here is constantly check if there is a possibility to change the DOP, adjust the DOP for that specific query, right? Or, or, or statement within a store procedure. And it will try to lower down the DOP until it finds the best shift part, right? What about seeing this in action? Mm -hmm. Let me jump to uh, my virtual machine here. So let's see um, in action CE feedback. What I'm doing here is I will be, uh, let me go to top, yes. What I'm doing here first is I will be, I'm creating here an extended event session, right? So in this case, I have created the session and with this, we will go to my extended event called CE feedback and let's, uh, let me refresh. Yeah, and watch live data. So this is what I'm doing here. So, Let's go back here. What I'm doing also is getting my AdventureWorks uh, 2016 extension, and I'm changing the compatibility level to 160, uh, clearing the um, store, the, the, the query store, right? And also cleaning the uh, procedure cache. Then here I am creating a store procedure, which is quite simple, right? It's just doing a select on a table, right? Based on a specific predicate. So I'm running this, i creating the procedure, and what I will be doing next is executing this procedure 15 times, right? So I did it, I ran it 15 times. If we go to this new uh, DMBs, we said that is nothing, so nothing was raised. If we go to my extended event session, it's also empty, right? Let's try to execute this procedure one more time, the number 16, right? Okay, we just run it. Very good. I go here to my extended event session, right? And what I see is that there is an event called query feedback analysis. And it is suggesting that if we use this specific hint, right, is going to be uh, better. Very good. Interesting. I go to this uh, to DMBs again. I am saying I'm seeing here that the one that is query store plan feedback, I have one, which is the, the, the hint that I previous, previously saw, and the state is pending validation. I will run the store procedure one more time, right? I will go back to my extended event session. And in this case, the event is query feedback validation. Then I will run here my DMBs again, right? And I, this is a problem that I got uh, yesterday too. Let me do it one more time to do it uh, faster actually oh. here and here and here okay good so in my dmb now the verification pass and it's saying that it's using this specific hint if i go to my extended event to the validation one is saying that now the, um, the, the original CPU time was this one, and now is this one. So it did the verification for us, and it's saying that indeed it is better, right? So without 
me having to do anything at all, right? It just adjust this specific store procedure, the, the, the statement within the store procedure and added this specific hint and now it's doing better. Before we had to do it ourselves, identify it, modify it and verify. Now it's been done for us automatically. Super cool. For uh, DOP feedback, degree of parallelism feedback. What I'm doing here is also creating a store procedure based on the white wall importer database, right? I'm changing the DOP uh, at the instance level to be zero, right? So it's using all the available processing power, let's say. I'm creating also um, uh, uh, extended event session, right? And then the same, uh, setting up query store, cleaning query store, uh, enabling the DOP feedback, and also cleaning the procedure cache. What I'm doing next is basically executing a batch file, which is calling this store procedure multiple times. This may take some time, so I'd run this in advance. And what I'm showing you here is that Again, remember that at instance level, the DOP is zero, right? So what it did, it, uh, it say, hey, I will set the DOP to eight. And now, right, the original time was this one and the adjusted one, it was way, way better with DOP eight, right? Always executing this store procedure multiple times. But this is not over because, you know, we say, hey, now it continue moving on. And I believe that if I set the DOP feedback to six, it's going to be even better, right? So again, it keep adjusting the DOP on the fly, right? And it keeps moving and moving and moving. So this is not a one time only, same for the CE feedback. If it detects that something could be better, right? It will do it, but then it will keep evaluating. And if there is something that could be done even better, it's gonna do it uh, right away, right? Good. What else? Okay, in terms of uh, security, uh, leisure for SQL Server. We will see if we have some time to see a, a cool demo. Uh, always encrypted, there are enhancements and also TDS, support for TDS 8.0. Uh, In terms of scalability, Microsoft is trying to do something which is really, really cool, um, which is a hand free 10 dB. Right? We know that it's super hard to set up the 10 dB in terms of the amount of files, the size, the growth, the location, et cetera, et cetera. Now, with this hand free 10 dB, we will have the ability of just setting up the 10 dB. I won't say like the default with one file, uh, but you know, there are pretty cool uh, demonstrations that is showing that there are no contention even if you use only one. File. And in terms of availability, uh, as I mentioned earlier, contain availability group with the possibility of, uh, you know, synchronizing not only the user databases, but also the system options. The list of features is really, really extend. There are multiple areas like, for example, a very good compression in XML uh, data types, right? Before it was a little bit uh, complex. Now, uh, um, you know, the compression is, is, is really interesting. If you use uh, dynamic data masking, now there are additional granularity on this, so, and so on and so forth. There are a bunch of new features in multiple area. So, leisure for SQL Server. The challenge is to use the power of cryptography in SQL Server, right? And, you know, the idea here is that if, let's say, we need to set up an environment in where we need to 
have a table with an application and we have to make sure that the data is not tampered, right? It's not screw up by anyone, including the sysadmin, right? So if you have the sysadmin uh, role, you can, you know, go there, delete, you can change data uh, or, or anything, right? With ledger, you can create this table with this ledger table, right? And you and make sure that nobody can mess up the data in uh, this day, in these um, uh, ledger tables. Furthermore, there are some procedures that allow you to execute it and verify that the data that is there has the same hash, so it was not uh, modified at all. With that, if you have, you know, a banking solution or any solution that definitely you have to uh, verify and be able to show to an external auditor, for example, that the data is not tampered, you can do it uh, quite easily, all right? The hand-free TEMDB, as I said, for the contention, this is super cool, right? Uh, and again, this is a um, evolution of some of the features already uh, cover in SQL Server 2019, right? You know that in 2019 there was the TEMDB metadata optimization, right? Now in SQL Server 2022, uh, you have the SGAM and GAM concurrency in where, you know, there are almost no latches in terms of uh, contention. Super, super cool. Um, the uh, distributed availability group, as we said, and uh, data virtualization, right? If we need to get access to an external um, um, data lake or, or something, we can easily, from SQL Server, create these external tables, which in the back end will be pointing to an either uh, Azure storage uh, account with a container, an Azure data lake, or any S3 compatibility storage, like for example, the one provided by uh, Amazon, right? In there, you can specify, uh, you know, your file, your parquet, Delta, CSV, text file, or anything, and very easily you can access this from SQL as if it is uh, uh, a normal table, right? Super, super cool. Let's see this in action, right? Really quickly. I believe I have this in here. So if I go and check. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, uh, external tables. What I will be showing you here is basically a simple, you know, script, which is using a public uh, storage account, right, with a data lake Right, which is public and is storing all the data related to the New York taxes. Right? So here I'm just doing a select star and what I'm getting is directly the data that is storing those uh, parquet files in the storage account. Right? So super cool, without doing anything, we can get it from here. So then instead of doing this, we can create an external table here we can see all the files that are part of my results right all the parquet uh, files what we can do here is instead of doing the uh, open row set command we can create an external table pointing to this uh, azure data lake and we can have a table within sql and then we can use that table to join it with our local tables or 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 anything Super, super cool. Um, what else? All right, use the enhancement in T-SQL, right? A bunch of uh, functions to handle JSON, a bunch of new T-SQL functions to do more with less, as I said. Right, greatest, least, improvement in string and split, improvement in trim function, 
So really, really uh, nice feature. So as a summary, SQL Server 2022 is really Azure enabled for disaster recovery, right? With a distributed availability group with managed instance, analytic with Synapse Link, and security with PureView. The built-in intelligence you have seen uh, by yourself, right? You can reduce the query tuning uh, uh, with no code change, right? We haven't changed a single line of code and uh, we got a lot of improvement. A lot of innovation in security, scalability, and availability. Data virtualization and object storage, as we just saw, and enhancements in the T-SQL language. Um, if you want to learn more, right, there are a bunch of resources available. You can go download the evaluation edition, download it, install it, and play around. You can create uh, an Azure Virtual Machine from the marketplace uh, and use it. Use the new Management Studio, uh, use the Learning Portal, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Myself in at MSC, we've been part of the whole journey of SQL Server 2022. So, you know, I was focusing in all the features, but mostly in the testing for the performance features. So when Bob Ward made the uh, announcement, um, uh, we were part of the presentation as well. Also, uh, we have like a use case uh, on how MSC is using all these new features right if you want to learn more uh, this is the qr code for uh, you know the the documentation the uh, the learning portal so you go there you get all you need and the same for azure sql fundamentals and with that we just finished the presentation if you have any questions, as I said, you have my contact information here. Feel free to reach me if you have more questions. I went, I went really, really fast. There are a lot of points to cover. I just tried to highlight the, 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 the most important ones, at least for me. Right? So uh, that's all I have for, for, for you today. Shin? Excellent presentation, uh, Javier, as always. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Tim, you do have access to unmute yourself. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have uh, questions. You can see how much uh, effort uh, Javier put in that, you know, to share his knowledge and experience. Um, feel free to interact with Javier while he's live with us. If you do have a question, raise your hand and Javier will uh, address that. I, I see some questions in the chat. If you want, we can go through them uh, very quickly. That would be uh, perfect. Correct me, PureView is for data lineage and not for security. Well, actually it's for both. It's for data lineage and for security. You can segregate roles within SQL Server and push it directly, but you create the, uh, you know, the, 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 this uh, permission directly in, in PureView. Quite, quite interesting. Uh, are you, you reply already, uh, Shin. I, I didn't see the... the does SQL Server 2022 have any improvement in availability group for Linux servers uh, on on premise? Uh, well, um, the, the the effort that Microsoft is doing is just to you know there are a bunch of hidden trade flags to improve on how the the the, the availability groups behaves, etc. So uh, there are a lot of improvement in terms of how to handle distribute availability group, right? Which are the one that you can use, uh, for example, if you don't use window cluster, or if you want to combine uh, a cluster running Windows Server and a cluster running Linux with SQL Server, or, uh, you know, manage instance as we saw today, right? All that part is really, you know, a lot of enhancement. First of all, a lot of enhancement within the um, the management studio before you have nothing graphically speaking to to follow the distributed availability groups 
right? So this is one of the main enhancements. Also in this area, when you have a distributed availability group, and let's say that you wanted to do a failover, you didn't have the possibility because, you know, distributed availability group is by default and the only way you have is asynchronous, right? So you don't have a confirmation that all the, your, the data that you have in the primary is committed in the secondary cluster, right? Now there are some improvement in, in this area. Uh, uh, does the on-prem SQL Server need to be enterprise for the Synapse integration? I'm not totally sure, but I believe that the answer is no. You can use uh, a standard edition as well, but I'm not 100% sure. What are the performance considerations in SQL Server 2022 with um, CTA's uh, federated table? I assume that this is data virtualization. Uh, well, the answer for that is it depends. You know, it's for my personal experience, this is way, way better than handling a link server, right? Um, but I still didn't have uh, the opportunity to test with a big, big data set and combine, you know, a storage uh, at data lake with a lot of data there on an external table and then do, for example, a join with a local table. I'm working on that uh, as we speak because uh, we, we have run into a situation for that, that we need to, you know, consider the, the performance uh, to do this, right? Uh, did you have a chance to try new XML compression? The answer is yes, and the, the, the answer is it's awesome. It's compressing like a charm. Of course, you know that every single compression mechanism, you have a, a, a take back, which is processing power, right? You will see also that your CPU usage will go up when you are dealing with compressed XML, XML, right? But in terms of size, if size is what you really want to accomplish with the compression, now is way, way better than what it was before. Excellent presentation, thank you for that. Um, can SQL Server 2022 license be you in Azure MI through uh, bring your own license to reduce costs? Well, this is as, as usual, right? If you have an agreement with Microsoft, a contract with licenses, you can use your, uh, you know, licenses to brought to any of the managed uh, services with the, and, and reuse it with absolutely no problem. Mm -hmm. 